when when I first watched your film, I I found myself drawn, um, I guess, more so than usual with the film, I should say, uh, to, to to feeling this tension between movement and stasis. And well, I think there are many many ways we can talk about this with your film, but I figured I would start with the most obvious one, which is this situation with the bull running loose and the workers who were introduced to uh, over the course of the film uh, sort of hiding in trees. Um, where did this image occur to you? Was it the jumping, a jumping off point for the film? Yeah. Um, this was the main, um, it was, it was the center of, of the story. But uh, is actually, even if it's, we could think of it as a, um, um, a complete fiction, it's something very vulgar in Alentejo. I mean, there are, bu there are bulls, and sometimes they, they disappear into the countryside, so, and people are working. So... Um, what we can do is to go on trees because um, there's nothing more. Um, you can't run away from a bull. I mean, you shouldn't because it's dangerous. <laughs> so, yeah, it happened to some friends of mine and it happened to Maria Caterina, the main actress, the old woman uh, with whom I worked in the previous film also. Um, yeah, so actually I, I, I started to think about this film. Um, the first image that appeared to me was the bull, exactly after finishing the previous film. And, um, and I'm afraid of bulls, as everyone should be, because uh, they're very dangerous. And I, I didn't understand why I was thinking of this bull, and it was keep, it kept appearing in my um, imagination so yeah so then I thought it would be a wonderful uh, um, idea to work on it like to um, it's very simple the bull comes so we go up into the trees and what happens up there everything can happen so that that was the main, yeah, the starting point, yeah. So fr from that image, where did that take you? Did it take you then to the actors who you're working with? Or, you know, do you, do you, what, I'm, I'm curious, like, what your, your writing process is from that point. Um, I, I would imagine you're not working from a kind of traditional script, um, especially since there's so much emphasis in this film on sort of the, the tradition of oral storytelling. I wrote the, the first script because it's what you have to do these days. You have to write a script and then you propose the script to some financing, um, something, funding. And, um, and then you wait for it for years uh, or, or for months. And, um, and it's an interesting uh, process this, that you have to write something that you know you would never, at least for me, you know, I would never follow the script because I know life affects mm, at least the way I want to do cinema or I'm interested in, and especially with the actors I work with. Um, I would never, th this would, would mean that I had to, I would have to impose like dialogues or, you know, a certain scene. So, yeah, I wrote the script in 2017, and then I started to, um, yeah, to pre-production, uh, to think where I would film and with whom, and, um, and then COVID came, so we stopped everything, and then uh, I wanted to shoot in 2021, which was the first year we were shooting, and I rewrote the whole script, um, thinking 
centralizing the um, the story in the trees, um, thinking of this uh, up and down situation, who is up there, who is down, uh, what is, and then, you know, it was, uh, yeah, and then I rewrote it all, and we, sh we were shooting in the first year uh, with a team, very small uh, crew, and and it was very 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 difficult to shoot because it's all just uh, sunlight. We just work with the sun, with the light of the sun, which I'm, um, you know, which I know very well. I worked like this in the previous film, but when you are in the trees. The, the the light is changing, but then another tree is uh, on the side, so it's affecting you. You don't have any control of. Uh, you don't know what is happening with the light. It's very difficult. So this this meant that we we were um, a little bit late with what we we had to do. So uh, I pushed it a little bit. So we we were uh, shooting for like two months and half. And and then I thought, okay, I want to be back, but with no crew. Uh, I mean, me and a friend, me and my son, my mother, <laughs> it's people that could come and help me. And to, yeah, like, a, you know, to find out what I really wanted to do or to explore more, to... And when you can do this, because you you take your own camera, and that's why you were saying that you I'm like all over the <laughs> the team. Uh, it's because um, it's it's the best way you you can be free. I mean, it's half a process, of course, but sometimes I I thought of it as m much easier in a way that you know. Okay, I would have to bring the camera myself and you know sometimes make some mistakes or you know you are alone uh, in the technical part but then wonderful things happen with the with the people you are working with the protagonists because they would never do things or they would never be uh, so you know cool and <laughs> because there is no team because no one is looking at them so this there is this confidence they have with me and uh, so we were just trying things so we found out many things uh, during the process uh, of shooting so I was kind of writing doing the sh during the shooting I mean writing with a camera <laughs> let's say so, and this is usually always in response to just what kinds of conversations you're having with your actors. Um, I, well, actually, maybe to rewind a bit, could you tell us who these actors are? What your, you know, prior relationship to with them with them is? And um, yeah, just what kinds of um, you said you wrote a script, then you rewrote a script, and then the filming process was its own writing process. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'm just curious what kinds of uh, conversations you're having with them too, how much they're contributing. I mean, this, this um, the, let's say, the general idea of the film, it's, it's, it's pretty much that, you know, um, it's my fault, let's say. <laughs> I mean, it's... it's um, I work with with uh, situations, moments, histories, uh, stories uh, of this community I where I was born. But you know, all the the, the construction, narrative construction. Uh, this was you know actually it was there from the first beginning already, because this didn't change. What changed was uh, I would meet someone in the street and think oh do you you don't want to come come and play <laughs> in the film to so, say oh no or yes or not this time or uh, maybe tomorrow or you know and then 
I mean, some people I know for many, many years. And, and some people, uh, they are friends of friends. And then they became my friends. And then we wanted to continue to work. Uh, so we invented new things to continue to work. But Maria Caterina is a different... Uh, I have a different relation with her. I know her for many, many years. And I invited her to do, to to yeah to be like the voice of this history in the previous film. So there are m many elements that are actually um, from um, biography or you know of each uh, of um, each one. But they're never completely uh, faithful to to the reality, let's say. So uh, we write, or I, you know, I hear or uh, organize some of uh, um, our exchanges, uh, as uh, you know, our di dialogues, and then because they also express our collective history and that I'm, I'm much more interested in this. But again, with Maria Caterina is a little bit different because um, w during the process um, of, since the beginning, we, we started to, to, since the beginning of the production, uh, many things change and one essential, crucial, um, event was that uh, her husband passed away uh, during COVID. Uh, so, but she wanted to uh, still play in the film. So we were thinking what could we, uh, if we could write him a letter. She doesn't know how to read or write because she was not never in school. So, so I remember exactly uh, what I, I told her this, and she said, "Oh, let's think. What could we see? What could it be?" And then she said exactly what is in the film. I mean, not exactly, but more or less. I mean, for me, it's almost exactly because I I memorized it, and then we reworked it with her, I mean, me and her, we, um, yeah, I wrote it after, and then I came back to her and and we uh, worked on it. Uh, I mean, because we have, because she doesn't know how to read, we have to, I'm, I'm repeating and she's memorizing. So, so in her case is this, uh, I think, beautiful dialogue she's having with the uh, with her own memory with with the memory of of the um, the community because there is also uh, her photographs because she's uh, always has these pictures with her you know that we all have and when in certain point um, older people uh, have this all um, world of images from since they were very young until, and this is also sharing um, our collective history through um, very intimate uh, moments or uh, yeah personal history. So I was very interested in in uh, show in 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 playing with this, playing, not playing, but, you know, trying to understand how uh, this imaginary of um, pictures, how we produce pictures, photographs, and how we keep them, and how uh, um, these photographs can express so much about uh, our our history, but in in a very intimate way, because they're very sentimental, sentimental, emotional. Uh, because it's it's uh, 
our brother, our uncle, our, in this case, my, grand, my grandfather, um, because I was also thinking about this, because then the war, um, all these wars uh, started, and, um, and I was shooting, we were shooting already um, some things with guns, and then I thought, oh no, <laughs> I cannot uh, now uh, look at this, uh, I cannot see guns no more, so how can we now work with this? And, and we were, before, you know, the invasion of Ukraine and all of this, I was already shooting with, my, with the image of my grandfather, who is played by my son. So I was thinking how all of these wars were so much um, like printed in our genes in a way and how they passed through history and how they are part of each family, you know, like um, because and the, the, the brothers of Maria Caterina that went to colonial uh, uh, war, um, yeah, so we are kind of sharing, working and sharing at the same time, so it was, uh, it's like a, yeah, it's a meeting <laughs> on the top of the trees. When, when did you first meet Maria Caterina? Um, Maria Caterina, I know her because she worked uh, many years with my father, my father is a, an agri agriculture, he's doing agriculture. Uh, my parents are doing wine. And so this is like a family, the family yeah, farm? The, yeah, yeah, part. So, uh, some vineyards are other vineyards. So, um, and it was always for me very, I was so impressed with, with Maria Caterina um, because she's a great, uh, impressive person. And yeah, and, and, and we met at that time, at, I mean, when I was a child maybe, not a child, a teenager maybe. And yeah, and then when I, when I was preparing the previous film, um, I saw her running, like doing something and then running to, it was not, a, she was not working, but she was like, uh, doing something else and she came to say something to someone and then she went away running and she was like 70 something and I was like who is this uh, <laughs> from where is coming all of this energy um, yeah and then you know her story is very is pretty much like the story of my grandfather that not this grandfather but the other grandfather that was born in the middle of nowhere, uh, taking care of ships, and you know, it's pretty much the the story of many many people of this uh, age, and yeah, and some of other actors, um, I grew up with them, and yeah, and some are like the child. Uh, is is the, the son of a friend of mine that, of my age that was with me in, in the same class. So there is my mother also playing. Uh, so I, yeah, it's pretty much. Um, um, I wanted also to uh, put together all of these people that sometimes uh, that from from the same community community that many times don't meet because they belong to different uh, social places or, you know, they have different. And yeah, and today, especially with the Roma community, they became um, the central uh, or one of the central um, um, groups of uh, the, the extreme right uh, chose to blame for all the problems and and this uh, became a very this is this has already a, an expression in their daily life and for example Suraya the the girl who is uh, opening the film and um, 
she cannot find a job or, you know, and many of, she's younger than me, but I was in school with uh, people of, uh, like, uh, of her family. And in my time, it was not like this. We were like, we knew every, everyone have um, different cultures or rituals, you know, but we were like all in the same city playing football. And, and today it's not like this. So, yeah. Um, I'll ask one more question, then we can take audience questions. Um, but uh, I, I'm, I'm curious, like at, at one point, this uh, choral collective narrative became quite clear to you if, if it was sort of there as you were shooting it or once you found all of your 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 shots um, or if that's something that changed a lot in your, in your edit. I mean, you, you worked with Claire Atherton, so I'm, I'm curious if you can just talk about that uh, collaboration a little bit and just, um, yeah, once you have all of your um, your footage and you're, you're looking at this material, um, were you finding yourself sort of surprised and, and changing a lot at that point? I worked with Claire in 2022, which was after the, <coughs> sorry, the first and the second year of shooting. So I was two uh, months in Paris with her and I was like, oh, I completely uh, failed. The film is not there. So I have to be back because it was something I, ha I, I had a feeling there was something missing very strongly. <coughs> I wanted to work with, with Claire because I, I met her before we were, um, we became friends and um, I thought it would be extremely important uh, for me in this uh, huge process of shooting and all of this to have uh, a look of someone from outside, you know, like uh, external uh, uh, regard, uh, a look, it's in, okay. So, so then, yeah, and it was very important because, you know, I, it's like you give your material to the, because I was editing the first film also myself. So it's like when you uh, used to edit yourself, it's really difficult <laughs> because you you go there with your finger like, no, no, here. And an editor would look at you like, don't touch it. <laughs> so this was also important. But it was so I but I understood and I told her, you know, I have to be back and and shoot more. And yeah so then i did this i i came back and shoot more and uh, and then i understood okay it was like impossible to be back with her in paris or you know so just um yeah edited myself but actually many things were pretty much uh, there from the beginning oh many ideas and many shots but then it's uh, Many things were built, constructed uh, already in the shooting, you know, because there is, uh, I don't know, because I, I, I meet someone and um, we want to do something together. So so there's there, all of these shots at, at the end, for example, were already um, shot exactly before Lucarno, after the film was selected. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, so I finished the film exactly before uh, the festival. What, what was missing? You said when you you went back to shoot. I don't know because I don't know what I found uh, uh, after that. But um, the work I, I'm interested in in doing, I did it a little bit in the previous film and this film also is. Uh, it's it's very difficult in the sense that I'm trying to work, uh, you know, uh, something interesting in a way of building a narrative that is not, of course, a classical narrative, believing that and trusting 
that spectators uh, can completely um, feel, think, um, imagine, participate in this uh, extraordinary um, um, extraordinary energy or uh, you know, which is this encounter of two images, you know, what can produce this in, so I don't, uh, I'm not interesting, interested in telling everything. I, you know, not just not interested. I'm, I, I think this is, um, this is, I don't want to tell or, you know, to guide. So there's also the, the film, uh, the night was uh, going into the night was also um, an opportunity to go into this dreamy uh, unconscious uh, world uh, of where m the history could uh, where we could dive into this uh, enormous um, tissue of uh, so many paths and again intimate personal and collective history and how you know all of this I think it's present in the landscape so so this is very you know it's very difficult to do I mean it's a big struggle and and I, I'm, I'm not sure I can say why or when I think, okay, the film is there. But, you know, there is a moment you say, okay, but you don't know why. <laughs> it's just, you know, the, yeah, and it's the work and it's the images and, and it's many things, the rhythm and the time and, and, and the space that the film creates, that it's, or, it's, it's um, yeah, it's, it's like, it's there. It's not you, it's the, all of these things together that are producing this uh, something. Um, I think we're running short on time, but if there are any audience questions, we can take one. Or... Yep, we have a mic, right? Can you talk, can you talk about the sound a little bit? It's, uh, I liked it a lot, so can you talk? Yeah, in general, about the voice and the sound. Of the voice, you say? Like both the sound and and, and the voices. I don't know if, I mean, or just say something about the sound. <laughs> OK. Um, so the sound is, um, is the sound of nature there. Um, but we, we, of course, we work it a lot. I mean, we do a lot of. Uh, um, ambient sounds, but also, yeah, and then it, it, it's a big work, very difficult for me, the sounds, it's very difficult, especially because um, Alentejo, in Alentejo we, we talk uh, a Portuguese with a certain accent, so it's, we have to, I work a lot with, with the actors, so with the actors, they are not actors. So, uh, you know, we normally, we don't say everything really with phonetically, you know. So, yeah, I wanted just uh, to be very, um, um, yeah, precise and the most I could to the space and the sound in this space. So that's it. Sometimes I have to struggle with uh, sound directors, because the, yeah, because there is also always this idea of that we have to fill the room to make the room full, and there's many sounds, and uh, you know it's cinema we can do it of course, but I'm more interested in kind of in a way recreating the space that is there. In of course this is completely um, made. 
in the sense that uh, we are not there and this is a <laughs> recording. But then Maria Catarina, we did a lot of, uh, for example, all the dialogues, she's almost whispering. Yeah, this is me and my son inside the car. And, and yeah. So we, we ask her to... Yeah, cars are very good uh, studios. <laughs> well, I'm getting the cutoff sign. We're out oh. of time. Uh, but Marta, thank you so much for your film and, and for being here. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much.